Mario Kart's getting the deluxe treatment, so what does that mean? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're taking a look at the top 10 things you need to know about Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for the Nintendo Switch. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this video, we're going to take a look at the remaster of Mario Kart 8, and providing our final thoughts on the game for you to make an informed decision. In the interest of full disclosure, a copy of this game was provided to us by Nintendo of Canada before release. Mario Kart 8! Number 10. What is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe? Unless you've been living under a rock, you know that Mario Kart is Nintendo's beloved mascot racing series that's been around since the 90s. Deluxe is a remastered version of Mario Kart 8, originally released for the Wii U in 2014. All the tracks, including the ones originally released as DLC, are included in this game as standard, as well as a completely revamped battle mode, which addresses the Wii U version's biggest issue. Last year, we gave Mario Kart 8 the number one spot on our best Wii U games list, as well as the top spot on our top 10 Mario Kart games list. So you probably won't be surprised to hear that it's already a pretty good game. Number 9. Does this run better on the Switch? The short answer is, yup. In handheld mode, it runs in 720p, just like the Wii U version, and at a full 1080p while in docked mode, all while running at a solid 60 frames per second with no performance dips whatsoever. The higher resolution means there's an improvement in picture detail on HDTVs, with the game also maintaining 60fps in two-player mode, though it does drop to 30fps while playing with three or four players, just like the Wii U version. Number 8. What's new in the Deluxe Edition? With the exception of the battle mode, which we'll cover later, this deluxe version mostly offers a small amount of changes. Racers can now hold two items during the race, the Boo item returns once again to steal other racers' items, and there's now a third level of power sliding turbo to push for, though it's very difficult to pull off considering how much drifting is required. However, despite these additions, the fundamentals of the racing are pretty much the same as the Wii U version. There are also no new tracks in the Grand Prix mode, which is kind of unfortunate. Number 7. Who can you play as? Cheater. With a total of 42 characters, this roster is by far the biggest in the series' history. All previous characters from the Wii U version, including ones previously locked behind DLC, are all available right from the start. Joining them are Dry Bones, King Boo, and Bowser Jr., all of whom were last seen in Mario Kart Wii. But the biggest additions are the Inkling Boy and Inkling Girl from Splatoon, each of who have three different color variations to choose from. Finally, Amiibo support now extends to Splatoon, giving your Mii racers some neat new outfits. Number 6. More accessible for new players Nintendo has introduced some new features allowing young children and new players to keep up with their more experienced friends. First off is Auto Acceleration which is pretty self-explanatory and more of a convenience since players usually have to just hold the A button down the entire time anyways. The most noteworthy feature is Smart Steering, which, at the cost of being unable to do that third power slide boost that we mentioned earlier, essentially prevents players from driving off the course. Its assistance can be a bit overbearing, however. For example, on the slippery turns of Neo Bowser City, we found that the game had set up invisible walls on some of the tighter turns, essentially taking almost all of the challenge out of a really challenging track. Number 5. Wait, does that mean the game can just play itself? With the inclusion of smart steering and auto acceleration, it certainly sounds like you can handle the car like a Tesla on autopilot mode. We tested this theory out by turning these features on, setting the game to play the Mushroom Cup on 50cc, and then we just put the controller down. What we found is that the car doesn't maneuver to collect coins or avoid obstacles, nor will it use items on its own. Yeah, that's all still dependent on player feedback. In the end, our autopilot driver ended up finishing fourth overall, so we tried again on 200cc Special Cup, and the autopilot ended up finishing dead last. So TLDR, basically, yeah, it can play itself, but not too well. Number 4. New Battle Arena Battle mode is where Nintendo spent most of their time improving the game over the Wii U counterpart. In the original version, the arenas were repurposed tracks from Grand Prix, which were less than ideal for this mode. 
But now Nintendo has given us eight specially designed arenas for battle mode, four new ones, three returning arenas from previous Mario Kart games, and a modified version of Urchin Underpass from Splatoon. The difference they bring to battle mode is practically night and day, as the battles can get frantic quickly, and there's now plenty of room to maneuver. Plus, the feather item, last seen in Super Mario Kart, makes a return exclusive to battle mode. Number 3. New Battle Modes Nintendo didn't stop at designing new arenas, they've also included a total of five game modes for battle enthusiasts to sink their teeth into. You have your standard Balloon Challenge, which has been with the series since the start. But now there's also Bomb Blast, last seen in Double Dash, which makes everyone's items a bomb. There's also Shine Thief, which again returns from Double Dash, in which players have to hold on to a Shine Sprite for 20 seconds without getting hit. Coin Runners from Mario Kart Wii and 7 also make a comeback, where players have to collect as many coins as they can. And finally, the newest mode is Renegade Roundup, which puts players into two teams in a cops and robbers style chase match. Number 2. How does it play online? The online interface in Deluxe is almost identical to the Wii U version, with the main exception being in battle mode, where game modes are selected at random when you're playing with strangers. While the majority of our sessions were relatively smooth, we did notice the odd lag issue where sometimes it looks like a rival car gets hit by a shell and the crash animation plays, but the car itself doesn't slow down till a bit later, if at all. Granted, these moments were rare and more of an oddity than a game-breaking glitch. Do note, however, that while it's currently free, Nintendo has stated that online play will require a paid subscription starting sometime in the fall of 2017. Number 1. Should you purchase Mario Kart 8 Deluxe? If you don't already own Mario Kart 8 for the Wii U, then the answer is an absolute yes. In fact, I'd even go so far as to say that it's almost worth buying a Switch for if you're a Mario Kart fan. This is probably the best iteration of Mario Kart to date, with so much content included that it's guaranteed to provide hundreds of hours for all gamers, regardless of age and skill level. Unfortunately, we can't share the same enthusiasm if you already own Mario Kart 8 for the Wii U. Fans who crave battle mode might want to take a look at it, but if you've barely touched that mode in previous titles, there really isn't enough new changes to justify purchasing the game all over again. So, do you like our review setup? Tell us in the comments if you'd like to see more of these, and check out these other great videos from WatchMojo.com.